Hey everybody, I am Rain and this is Victory Gardens by Rain. Today I want to do uh, my very first official garden tour. I'm so excited. Uh, it is a beautiful day outside. I'm kind of standing in the shade, but the sun is just shining. It's so great. I'm so, so ready for it. Um, let my hair be doing some kind of weird something, but we, anyway, so, uh, what I want to do is I want to kind of take you through, um, my spaces, like what I plan on doing with my yard and with my garden. Um, and hopefully you guys can come alongside of me and check it out and see, and, um, maybe contribute some ideas, anything like that. But, um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I, I'm so excited because we are rebuilding my garden. Um, I've had my garden in the space that it is in right now for four years. Uh, I, my original build, I did a, like one day project as my, while my husband was at work and he came home to <laughs> this project I had gotten myself into and it worked really well uh, for the four years that I did it. But, um, we it needed to be rebuilt and so when he rebuilt it or when we decided to rebuild we decided to do a lot of different changes so my garden is not structured right now in the way that it will be uh, but i think that's a perfect opportunity to bring you guys along so that you can kind of see the beginning stages and what we're working on and kind of how we're going to get from point a to point b through the entire season with that so today is february the 13th uh we are doing I'm just going to do the garden section today uh, to, instead of doing a full yard overview. I don't know how long this video is going to be. This is going to be my first real video um, that I'm putting on YouTube kind of with intention without any help. <laughs> so we're going to see how the tech side of things go. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start and show you behind me is my garden. But usually I come out, this is my front door. And I come down these steps and down this little thing and it's going to open into this is my brother's um apartment he's he's not my birth brother but we collect each other i collect a lot of people so um that's who that is this is their apartment we converted the garage into a little uh, living space for them and I, it's so cute i love it but um this area right here this is my green stock it'll be pulled forward and we're going to build kind of like a sitting area right here, like a front porch type thing. And you see where these two planters are right here and right here. Uh, that was where the arch was, but we're going to move that. So, oh, here's my babies. Hi, babies. <laughs> okay, I had a dog attack from my mom babies. I actually just just got home from doing the lunches at my son's school and i was like you know what i think i'm gonna try to do a garden tour so um anyway that's what that's Look, shorty got something to say i'm gonna put my drink down but anyway so usually let me get back in here so you can kind of see so usually the arch this was the entrance right here but we're gonna move it down to this kind of concrete crack be in the middle and then that's going to be the entrance of the garden so we're actually going to kind of I'm going to flip the camera around so you can see my view um, and kind of I'm going to do a maybe you can hear me when I'm talking or I might need to do a voiceover I'm not sure but we're going to try this and see we're going to figure it out together but you guys welcome to my garden okay so all right, so this is my garden. So I'm standing in my garden as if, I don't want to swing around too fast, but as if I just came to the entrance. But um, this is the main part of it. I don't know, it's so cute. I love it so much. So um, behind me is the terrace. And so this is the part that I built by myself that I'm actually re we're rebuilding. My husband's putting some real good stuff in there instead of how I had it before, but um, it's four layers. So I've got a planting la layer on top. This second layer right here is my walk pathway, my walk, walkway, my walkway. Okay, so that's gonna be the second layer. 
and then the third and fourth layer is going to be planting. So I'll be able to stand on the ground, plant everything from on the from the ground here, um, and then plant it here. And then for, to maintain this second row, I can go this third this walkway. I can turn towards the fence and m maintain this, at, or turn around and then maintain this one. Does that make sense? Let's try it. So anyway, so this is my whole garden. This is a hundred feet all the way down to there. That's a hundred feet of planting spaces. So originally, well, it stopped right here at the fence is where last year's garden stopped. And so I just had that space, but we extended it out because right now I'm in the shade and it's only 2.45 ish. Um, but all of this right here, Rum, Rummy, come here, good girl. All this right here is new, but we ended up having to extend it out because I didn't have enough sunlight in this area uh, because I am in the alleyway between my neighbor's house and my house. This is south facing um, and that's east, west, north okay but what that means for me in my garden space is this is the only space in my entire yard where i can get enough sun to grow a full sun garden so behind me are these uh planter boxes these are t mostly we had a little we have a couple that have some measurements that are different but this is four foot by two foot boxes and these are actual raised bed gardens i filled them up with the hugo culture method uh, but this over here is just a terrace where we just evened out the ground and we added soil on top soil and compost so we have those so right now um what's grown in my garden is these guys so this is the first box see this is the what would have been the entrance way just for some perspective this was an edible landscape that I did and we've harvested out of it. I had cabbages. This is some sad lavender, but I'm just going to prune those down and they're just going to pop right up. If you look right here, there's new growth. Isn't it beautiful? I'm so excited. So a real quick tip with lavender, a lavender does not like to have its roots wet it likes well draining uh, like a sandy loam soil um and i am in the middle of a flood zone and so i was i did that i planted it there kind of testing it out because i knew that we were going to install a french drain it's going to go under my pathway right here we've got to get that corrugated pipe you dig a trench you put the corrugated pipe down let me rephrase. You dig a trench, put some gravel down, put some corrugated pipe with like this um, netting over it so that debris doesn't get in your pipe. And then you put the gravel over it so it's kind of buried in the gravel and it diverts the water from your area. And that's what we're gonna do. And we were gonna gravel the pathway anyway. And so my husband and I decided that for the health of the longevity of the garden it will help to not have the standing water here um and there's just not much we can do about it because we are in you know a staggered cul-de-sac it is what it is and we just make sure that we um are making steps to to steward it well and that's what i think the french drain is going to do that's going to keep us out of a flood zone so because i knew that I went on a tangent but because i knew that was in the future plan i went ahead and planted these lavenders here but what I did not know, and they'll be fine. Like once we put that drain in, they'll be fine. Uh, the gar the gutter here, we're actually going to put a rain barrel right there because they're legal where we're at. But um, anyway, I'm going to take them down and cut cut it out. However, or my plan was to just trim them down and let them regrow after that. However, the plan changed when uh, we added this part right here, the front part of the terrace in. And I have actually decided to extend out the garden all the way down. I'm trying not to, I'm trying to learn how to be a camera person, but all the way down to the garden, the greenhouse. So I'm going to walk down here for 
perspective so you can kind of see and then i'm going to turn the camera towards the garden and i'm going to try to see if the lighting whew, blinds me but oh that's still my face hang on okay so i'm standing in my driveway that's my front door right and then it goes and then the garden entrance is going to be right here if that gives you some perspective and so as you come forward right here is the start of my gravel landing pad um and then this is my little greenhouse and that's the trash can where the boys left it well i left it there but anyway um this right here is kind of like a poor man's little protective area for my perennial plants down there they get plenty of sun but anyway and this is my little seating area that i recently made and it looks like my little trellis fell over but i'll have to fix that but anyway i digress again so as we came from the original garden which stopped right there we extended it forward out 20 a little bit over 20 feet because this gets so much more sun um and so that's going to give me more planting space to do things like tomatoes and peppers well not peppers but tomatoes and eggplants and sun loving plants and then right here which i think the entrance of the garden is going to be right here so we're going to have a long box coming from into the from the end of the house right here all the way down and then a long box coming from the end of the house all the way down here and then there'll be a pathway coming from the greenhouse up to my little sitting area right there so i'm actually really excited about that part so that's the okay so that's the general plan of this area so this won't be here um and so i'll have my little pallet walkway come down and it'll just come like it may tie into this arbor just so that there's like a natural path coming through um but i'm gonna come around here and let you see it this way but this part right here from here down all the way like this we're just gonna have long beds that are gonna be very similar to these guys right here um They're going to be very similar to these guys that are going to be built exactly the same way, except for just turned and then just plop down right here like that. And this is mainly where I'm going to be planting my tomatoes. Now I may, depending on what this walkway ends up looking like, um, there might be a little L situation, but I don't, I don't know. We'll see. And then there'll be some ornamentals here and then a vining ornamental there. I don't know what's happening with that thingy thing and then for this arbor this actually has gates that go with it like this is that not the cutest thing this arbor i'm probably going to use annually which means uh, using it annually just means i'm going to use it for something that i can grow annually and because i think food is so beautiful I would much rather have some beautiful food kind of coming off of this particular trellis because it's an entrance way for my neighbor babies. My neighbors live right here and they all come down and just kind of hang out with us. And so I'd like to have something beautiful for them to walk into and it'd be like a great entrance into a secret garden or something like that. I would love that. So I was thinking like a jarry melons or a small, uh, mowgli melon i don't know just like a tiny little some sort of melon because i think that would be a treat or probably green beans you know like some pole beans or something like that just so they have something fun to walk through i just really want that to be an enchanting experience for them and their every day you know coming through here and then on this this arbor that i'm going to build for the front entrance of the garden is actually going to be two screen doors that one of my co-workers gave me when she was remodeling her new house she came in and <laughs> she i was telling her how i really wanted to have doors like a screen door going into the garden and this was like two years ago and i've been holding on to these suckers 
since then. Um, and it's, so it's gonna, we're gonna come through, like this will be the front door, and so it's gonna be like walking through the screen door. Um, and then I, we're actually gonna build that arbor because it's gonna be square and it's gonna be permanent. This one back here, this r sort of metal one, it can be moved. Um, but this one we're gonna just bury in the ground and then probably create some um, separation in the raised bed that we're gonna put beside it where I can plant something perennial. So that would be like a climbing rose. Um, I would pro I'm actually really thinking about doing a climbing rose on one side and a clematis on the other so that we um, have that offset romantic look and then they bloom at separate times. So that way it always, you know, we'll see how that goes. This uh, bed that will be on the side of it though, it will be also, it'll have tomatoes in it which on the tomato trellis i'll have i'll do the i'm doing the tomato trellises like i did over here last year which i don't know if y'all can see that but they're like cattle panels and u post or t post and uh, we just zip tied it together a very simple structure and that's just kind of be the front wall here and that's how it's going to be my other plans are in the middle of this rebuild let me get over here now that i don't have the sun in my eye is this entire walk path on the terrace is going to be graveled and then there's going to be big stone which i have i've been trying to use the things that we have around the house we have had several projects kind of evolve what in the 15 years i've lived here i'm not sure i don't know it's adding up i have to do math but since we've lived here i moved in to a straight up bachelor house and it was, it's been a situation. Like we have had, we've walked through so much <laughs> with this yarn in 15 years and it's finally getting to a point to where uh, we can finally do some landscaping and I'm educated enough to where I'm comfortable making those decisions now. Um, so I'm very excited about turning this into my, our forever space. Uh, Cause we were on the fence about moving for a minute there. Uh, but we are just, we're just really blessed where we're at. So I want to stay here. Uh, but this is the type of stone that is going to be the pavers right here. That's going to be up in the walkway. So I'm actually going to go up and show you. So we've got these stones temporarily right here, but there, it's all going to be these right here. So it'll be one big stone here and then kind of go up and then this entire um, area is gonna be a walkway. So this is a better perspective of kind of understanding what I have going on here. This is a planting terrace, walking terrace, planting, planting. So I will be able to tend to the first terrace from the ground and then where each one of these stone things are will be a pathway, a stepping stone. So I'll be able to go up the stepping stone to here, right here, and then tend to this side if I turn around and then tend to this side if I'm facing this way. It's a little clever if I do say so myself. So it gives me, it gives me a lot of freedom. So I'm up here, um, not really walking. Oop, nope, I did. Oof. It's not exactly stable right now because this is actually a, a, a this is actually a ditch right here so it's not straight because all of this was mulch before and so now it's really great compost so i'd much rather have the compost in my growing space all this beautiful gorgeous soil and so we've been digging out the pathway <laughs> and filling up the terrace and uh, th i love that because that way all the soil microbes and everything that we have patiently waited to break down it's being reinvested into the garden right here. So right now I have at the very end, there's some carrots growing. We just kind of did construction around that. Uh, but this entire pathway right here is going to be gravel with those red four faced stones. I'm going to get back down before I die, but I'll turn around so you can see it from this view. So that's the greenhouse. This is the planting one, 
and it's just gonna go straight so it's planting walking planting planting I'm so excited uh, this is not leveled yet so it's kind of dangerous to go up and down right now um, mm -mm. so the other thing that we're gonna do with just the garden space is right here behind me was the end of the garden for the backyard Whew, my arms getting tired but um, I'd like to my compost area is actually over there in that corner right there and it's a lot for me to go back and forth I mean I know it's a short distance but if I can take and put everything readily available in a space to where I don't have to depend on others to come and help me navigate that's my that's where my heart's at that's what I want to do you know to create my own space but we're gonna still keep the edge of the house right here as the boundary and we're just gonna extend this little garden fence all the way down to I call it the prison wall but my husband hates it when I say that but when we had that this retaining wall built there was a lot of miscommunication about the design on it and so we've kind of sat on this project for two years now because one I can't find contactors everybody is booked 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 right now and then two I don't know what I want to do with it so I don't want to make another just a rash decision just because it's an eyesore for right now um so what my my plan is for this year is mainly focusing on this this vegetable garden but uh we're we're gonna rock face that like stone face it and it's gonna come we're gonna have it backfilled to where it meets the back we call it the back 40 but it's we only have an acre a little bit over an acre over here and it's in a cul-de-sac so it's like a piece of pizza pie shape um triangle shaped not pie pie is round <laughs> so the uh anyway so the back 40 back there is eventually going to have those trees we're going to cut the trees down and then my heart if i if i could pray any of the prayers it would be no so we're going to cut all that down because my heart is to transform this into a homestead um so we want to have space available to have a high tunnel we'd like to have space available to have more uh, raised beds uh, but our main concern here is not really space it's sun and we don't have a lot of sun so we need to cut down those trees and my neighbor uh, they plan on staying here for a while as well so we're going to go in together and have this entire back part cut um so all those trees are going to come down we're going to harvest those trees we're going to reuse a lot of that we're going to mill the lumber and that is going to be super exciting I'm, I'm really excited about that so as we cut the trees down um we're going to reuse that lumber to build raised beds so that's exciting but that's in the five-year plan not this year plan so this year what we're going to do is actually take this fence from the edge of the house and run it all the way down to the prison wall you see where that first step down is right here it about meets evenly right there so that opens up this entire space behind me and that's where um right here because the the retention wall comes all the way up here and then they stop right there for some reason but anyway it's like i said it was just it was just a situation and that's okay so this entire spot right here is going to be i had it a sitting area but um it's going to be my compost bin it's going to come out with four slots i'm just i'm just doing the pallets you know where you make four columns of pallets once one fills up you move on to the next one that's what i'm going to do that's what i'm comfortable with so that's what i'm comfortable with and after that we're going to take this from this corner over to where the fence stops is going to be hopefully a space for some chickens and a little chicken coop and i'd like to have this little area kind of pinned up not not like a pin not like a coop per se because i am going to let them out and and free range them 
uh, throughout the backyard and you know I want to have a mobile chicken tractor um, as well that's kind of in the works but my husband is not quite there yet so that is gonna be he said he said if you get I forget how many but it was like if you get a thousand likes on a video or something like that then I'll let you have some chickens and so I'm just gonna call out to you guys and be like hey can you hook a sister up and like and share so I can get some chickens <laughs> that's that's the main thing and so <laughs> But I really do. I do really want to get some chickens. And I want to make sure that I have them close enough um, to an area where it can be protective, have a lot of sun, and they get the best care that they can get. But also close enough to the garden. And also, I don't want to take a lot. I don't want to take our entertaining space away. Like So we, are, we have big plans of taking this entire backyard right here, which this is our backyard. Now keep in mind, it's the middle of February, so it's not like in its glory right here, but it's super cute. And that's the deck, it goes up to my kitchen right there is the entrance. And then this is the downstairs, which is, you know, like my husband's, ter you know, terrain, I don't know, area, domain, I guess. That's his man caves and my daughter's room and all that, whatever. But, uh, so we're gonna have on the deck, I guess I could turn it so you can kind of see as I'm, so on the deck right here, um, that we're going to extend the deck from end to end, from one side of the house to the other, and that's going to come. So with that, it's take it's going to be doing a lot of changing of the hardscaping and things. So we're not going to do a lot of that this year. We're just not. We're trying to get some contractors lined up to do some things because we our DIY days has passed. So we're going to get some contractors lined up. To try to get that project done once that project's done hopefully prayerfully that's going to open up having a sunroom which will double as a greenhouse um, and then that'll open up the space back here so that the kids can have an area to play i can have an area to have dinner parties you know that type of thing and i and i just i love it all of it and the whole the whole plan is just going to come together greatly so it, after so anyway that's just kind of like a general roundup. Um, but when we pull the fence right here at the edge of the garden and it comes down, that is happening this year. So we are going to have another entrance, which will probably be like you see where the table is set up right here. Um, I'd like to have it line up kind of if you're coming straight out of the door under the deck that you can just kind of come through the sitting area right here and then have like a little um, arbor entrance into the garden. So that means that this entire part will be walled off or, or fenced off so that there's only the one entrance. So that means that we will have to move probably this onion bed and we can't move that until the they're going to be ready about July. So we, we probably won't do that type of construction until the fall. So that's going to be better anyway, because that's going to give us a chance to focus on the harvest. Um, anyway, it's just going to be great. It's going to give us a chance to focus on growing food, preserving food and setting up our compost right here on this side for this season and then in the summer when I'm getting everything ready to transition we're going to build this where this onion bed is that's where the it may actually be more more now that I'm looking at it it's more here right in between these two beds so these two beds actually probably will move um and they're gonna move down here so until until the husband lets me get chickens and I have like a little chicken coop kind of a resting place for them I'll probably have raised beds going this way because even though we're in shade right now there is a there is a lot of sun here it's not the best sun situation but it's it's a great um it's there's a lot of food that can grow in in the shade in the summer 
where I live. So that will offer up a great amount of extra space so that I can focus on production. So my heart with this garden is to provide as much growing space as I can so that I can harvest as much food as I can so that I can make sure that we have some security in our food. And that's just kind of where, I mean, that's just kind of where we're at. I'm not trying to say anything about nothing. I'm not trying to do anything about nothing. All I'm saying is that's my plan. I just want to make sure I grow enough food to feed my family. And that's honoring God. That's honoring our land. That's stewarding it well. And that's all I'm here for. So that's all I want to do. So anyway, in this bed right here, there is strawberries planted. You can't see them. Um, they are dormant. I do have some bare root strawberries in there and I had I scattered some seeds out in the fall. So we'll see how that goes. I'm really excited about that. There's nothing actively growing in this bed, but I have let it kind of develop its own cover crop right here because I want to make sure that I never leave my soil bare for one, but two, I am trying to use this as a green manure, like a green source, because I don't have a lot of green to add um, to that bed. It, so I'm just going to put dirt over it. Any, anyway, we'll talk about that later. I'll tell you how. This has onions. It's got two different varieties. I've got Spanish and then I've got candy. This right here is collard greens in this bed. And the whole bed is collard greens. These were peppers right here. So um, that I never, I just never pulled them out, which I'm not going to pull them out. I'm just going to cut them off at the end. This right here is cabbage. This is Savoy cabbage. See how pretty? It's so pretty. It's like a, a leaf cabbage. So it doesn't really head up. It, but they're stunted. And I'm hoping they're stunted because they don't have enough sun. This, it, the Arctic blast got everything. And they're all just kind of recovering. These are red cabbages right there. Uh, this is collard greens right here. And these are snapdragons and pansies. So this one is, and they all got bit by the frost, but they are like, see how, look, they're just coming right back. All of that dead growth, but look at all this. It's going to be so pretty right here. And look at that. Hello, friend. But see the Arctic blast got my, um, what did I have in here? Oh, collard greens. Like the rest of the, those two were the only ones that survived, uh, but once collard greens go through a frost, they are so good. So I'm really excited about that. And this one looks a little bit more sad, but I've got to come out and do some maintenance. This bed right here is empty. I don't have anything growing in it right here. Also, let me just swing around here. This terrace, I don't have anything growing. Oh, I'm sorry. In that strawberry bed, there's also asparagus. So I, I lied to you. We did not... Yeah, I put strawberries and asparagus in that bed. But I've got onion starts right there. I don't know if you can see them. They're going to grow right in that area that they're in. And then I've got carrots growing up there. My phone keeps trying to focus on. Anyway, there's carrots on that top row right there. Two different varieties. So there's not much growing in here because we just built it. So this is all a brand new establishment. I do have one chive that came back there and a chive that came back there which I was really impressed with because we did a lot of stomping around up here just like little Remy. Remy what are you doing? What are you doing baby girl? And hello Jealous. <laughs> what, you, you ain't you are not supposed to be in my garden. You're not supposed to be up there. <laughs> so anyway in this bed it doesn't have anything, but I'm actually going to take and utilize this post. This used to be our fence post. We used to have a privacy fence just like this, and it stopped exactly where it stopped. And um, then I decided I wanted a garden here, so we tore it down. But we could not move this post, so we built the bed around it. It's actually concreted in. And I am going to use that for a pea, sweet pea trellis, so I'm excited. And then this section right here we're going to put a cattle panel trellis up right there and have them staked and my heart is to have 
either a fruit tree expelliard right here, some sort of fruit tree, or um, available space for some sort of bean, like a pole bean or a climber, like maybe cucumbers, maybe something, because I like, I like the idea of this space being vertical because I like the idea of this being a full garden all the way around. So all of this house will have a cattle panel trellis up against it. But I do want to be clear, there will be space in between like see my hole there's like a, a lot of space so there'll be space it's not going to be touching my house so that is good and that's going to bring a lot more growing space here because the roots don't take up much room in a bed and i still have so much more room to plant another crop but i could put i could plant a tomato right there and then have them grow all through the cattle panel and that is what i did last year but I don't want to do that this year so this right here uh has garlic look at it i'm sorry this one is mucha rose and then there was another variety back there wait, wait a minute no that's from the kale from when it got blasted i saved these and reused these for like years so anyway this is garlic i've got a couple that's come up I'm not real sure. I think maybe the Arctic Blast got them because this is wet. It stay, the, this soil stays wet. So because I'm in a flood zone, because it comes from, I mean, y'all, I get it from everywhere. It comes from back off the gas lines, which are way back. Okay, it comes down off of there. It comes from my neighbor this way. It comes from the cul-de-sac in front of my house comes down. Like we're just kind of like in a gully right here builders making good choices there but um the, it, it was not graded correctly there was a lot of it anyway it, the house is older and so that we have more information now so there's better standards now but right now we're just trying to play catch up with the runoff with water and we've got it maintainable but the french drain is really going to help a lot especially with this being such a high active area but the good part of that is, with it being in the middle of a flood zone, these beds right here are bottomless. So they don't have anything on the bottom of them. So when the soil that I'm standing on is wet, it actually wicks up from the bottom. So if this part right here is wet, this entire soil base right here is wet, then what is sitting under this bed is wet and so it wicks up which is exactly the design that i wanted to do with these open bottom beds and then the soil actually stays watered well when i tell you that i barely water my garden i am a hundred percent serious i barely water my garden it's because one my soil is well taken care of there's a lot of organic matter in there that holds soil um and then two it's because of the location that I'm at. Now, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and address the fact that I said I'm putting a French drain in here. So that's not going to be the micro environment that I am used to anymore. So I may have to change my watering habits and I may need to come up with some more creative ways with these boxes because that's going to eliminate the wicking process in the way that I know it. So that's going to be a learning curve, but I'm actually excited about that. I'm actually excited to see how it goes because I've already thought of that. God is so good and he gives me such a joy for this. <laughs> um, these gutters, I have gutters on this side and I have a gutter on that side. And what I'm thinking of doing is engineering. I'm just going to say that. That sounds better than rigging up but I'm going to engineer a system where the water from these gutters will go into a rain barrel and then the overflow from that rain barrel will go down smaller pipes along this wall into five gallon buckets that will be in between each bed. Okay, and then I can actually take those buckets and use the water from that to water each bed. <gasps> genius right I know I'm so excited I can't wait to implement that I don't know what that looks like outside of the 
math and then drawings and specs I've done on paper but we'll see how it goes there are um, gutter attachments to where you can have spigots and things kind of harvest your rainwater and I encourage you to look those things through because look let's be real rainwater is free God gives that to us for free and it is a great resource and it has all of the nutrients it has everything that God designed to water our earth with and if we can have that versus because I'm on city water if I could water with natural rainwater versus city water then that's going to keep the life of my soil going because city water is treated with a um, chemical like with chlorine and that keeps bacteria and things growing which is great for us as humans who are consuming it we're not getting any kind of you know fancy funk coming from that but for plants and for the health of your soil you do not want irrigated city water to be your main source of water for your plants you want the natural environment that these plants are, are seeking and what God created that seed to do when it grew so that's big so harvesting rainwater is going to be one of my big projects for this year but mostly harvesting as in redirection with a purpose okay that's what I'm trying to do so in this so we left off here on this bed this is my garlic it's very sparse um, it's a lot less than what I had hoped for but I'm gonna try again this year and I'm gonna try again in different places to see because it may not have been enough sun here I don't know every year I learn something new and I think that this is gonna be my learning year with garlic I've got some kale in the back of that bed that I love this is Brussels sprouts now I did transplant these Brussels sprouts and that's why this bed looks a little bit cleaner and more tidy than the rest um, I transplanted those Brussels sprouts from down there at the end the one that didn't have anything in it that I said didn't have anything in it it's because these Brussels sprouts came from over there they were definitely not getting enough Sun they have gr doubled in growth since moving them up here this front baby right here just little guy this is a cabbage like a head of cabbage so it's my only cabbage that I have that's growing outside of these per, uh, red cabbages that made it through the Arctic frost so I'm really really hoping he grows but springs here in Georgia that's where I'm from Georgia springs here heat up real fast so brassicas in the spring from our region are not the uh, most reliable crop to grow but we love them so much so I try it every year <laughs> so I'm hoping because these guys overwintered um, that I will have some Brussels sprouts soon. I did successfully grow Brussels sprouts last year on accident, but it was because I grew them up here in the um, terrace garden and I thought that they were collard greens because I didn't have a tag. I just brought sad plants home from the store and all year I was like, man, them leaves are just not growing all season. Those are just, just sitting there, just hanging out, you know, but Brussels sprouts leaves don't get big like collard green leaves <laughs> so when I walked up to the terrace to check it out and I was just going to pull it out there was little heads of Brussels sprouts that had already opened up because I had left them on there for so long because I didn't know they were Brussels sprouts and my four eyes couldn't see that far so anyway so <laughs> they are on ground level this year I'm gonna see how they grow I am very excited about it but the way that uh, Brussels sprouts grow, which I've got some babies growing already. You can see it right here. Hang on, let me flip you around so you can see. So Brussels sprouts grow in between the leaf stalks. So this little guy right here will grow up. Can you see it? Will grow up to be a Brussels sprout. So I'm praying that these guys will get some height on them. So these Brussels sprouts will have a chance to grow. But they're not really productive. But... They've been stunted for so long. And they were stunted because I had them in the wrong position. So a lot of times gardeners or people will come up to me and they'll be like, I really just, I don't, I can't garden. I don't know how, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and nothing grows, nothing does anything. Look, y'all, every gardener experiences that, every. If you meet a gardener that's never had a struggle with a plant growing, they are fibbing to you you best tell them to get right with god because they about to go up in flames because it is not true you can have successful growing years 
Um, and you will, you will have successful growing years. And there may be people out there that grow onions so well that they never have any trouble with them at all. But it's because they had to go through seasons of failure. Failing in the garden is such a winning experience because you get to glean wisdom from that. You get to be able to be like, oh, well, the reason why those collard greens didn't grow is because they were actually Brussels sprouts. And the reason why those Brussels sprouts didn't grow where they were is because they didn't have enough sun. So try planting that same plant. Um, do some research on the environment that it likes to be in. And, you know, like sometimes you can plant a fall cool crop, cool season crop in the fall, you know, like, and your fall be 100 degrees. And that is not going to grow. Then it has nothing to do with you. You know, that just, it wasn't in its best conditions and that's okay. So do it, grow it, keep growing, do it again. I'm going to drop my phone here. But anyway, so that was my lesson with the Brussels sprouts and I love it and I cannot wait. They're going to taste great because I heard a rumor and I'm really holding on to this. I'm just really holding on to it that homegrown Brussels sprouts taste like something you've never had before ever in your life. And we, my whole family loves Brussels sprouts. I like to make them, cut them in half, uh, sprinkle them with, um, like toss, toss them in a bowl in some extra virgin olive oil and then sprinkle some sea salt on it and then, uh, let them roast in the oven. And right before they start getting brown, take some Swiss cheese and put on top of it, kind of, you got to shred the Swiss cheese and put it on top of it. And you have this tangy kind of, uh, unique flavor with the Brussels sprouts and it's so good and I cannot wait to do that with my homegrown baby Brussels sprouts because they are going to be the most delicious. Um, the last bed that I have right here is kale and that's all I have in it is kale and my poor baby kales have been just trucking on along. They've been just kind of hanging out because they got hit by the Arctic frost, Arctic blast like real bad. I was in Minnesota when the Arctic blast hit and stayed, I was up there for several days and by the time I got back the things that I had growing in here that I thought would survive because they generally do when I was not concerned in the least bit for them uh did not survive because it got in the negatives like way negatives here I don't remember I'd have to look that up to tell you but um it was they what the arctic blast hit so I also have some chives hanging out in here and then I've got some of this Liriope that one of the babies left in here. So, I think. Also, I have a little oak tree. Can you see this? I don't know if it's going to live or not. But I found a, a sprouted acorn over here. And I thought it would be really cool to keep it. Because I have a friend that's pregnant. And, um when she burst that baby i thought it would be really cool to give her the little tree so that the baby can she's got pl plenty of property and she has no trees um so anyway i just thought that would be something really sweet to give her so i'm hoping that he trucks through and you know he will because seeds just want to grow that's all they want to do um so anyway we're back at the front and that's my tour that's this is my garden you guys this is what we're doing, we've got a lot of plans. Hopefully by the end of today, this will be done. Although it is getting chilly, really chilly now that um, the sun's kind of behind. I'm gonna come over here and see if I can stand in the sun because I'm starting to get cold. It's bad. I'm like the wimpiest of the wimps when it comes to being cold. I do not like to be cold at all, which is why Minnesota and the art for us was the situation. But hi, baby. Oh, you can with baby. <laughs> hey, shorty, shorty. Hey, mm -hmm. Anyway, anyway, so that's the tour of the the production garden. The oh, and here's my greenhouse right behind me. This right here. Oh my gosh, this was such an answered prayer. I had a customer at work, a uh, Mr. Bill. And he is the coolest guy, I tell you. If you want to meet some cool people, just work at a hardware store. Some of the best people come in there. And they have, you know, 
such great giving hearts. And I had told him two years ago, this, well, this is year three, but I had told him three years ago that I was looking for a greenhouse. And this is the type of man who he's, you know, kind of like a, a grumpy old man, um, just a blue collar, real steady, just does the next right thing. And he is extremely intelligent, can engineer anything. He was a, he's a taxidermist, which whatever. But anyway, he just has this gift of finding things. Like if you need random things, you tell Mr. Bill and then every so often he'll come back and be like, do you still need a blah, blah, blah? And then he's got it for you in his car right there. So that's kind of the situation that happened with this. That's exact, exactly the situation that happened with this greenhouse. I told him I was trying to do a greenhouse and I was really concerned because I couldn't get my seeds started and I was running behind and I was going to end up having to buy transplants and I just was, he just caught me at a moment of stress. And so he was like, okay, well, I kid you not, within weeks he was calling me back and he, or he sent me a text message and he was like, hey, do you still need that greenhouse? And I was like, yeah, but I think we're going to end up you know, rearranging some finances and I just don't think that it's possible right now. And he's like, well, can you afford $50? And I was like, what? Yes. Yes, I can do. So I got this for 50 bucks. <laughs> like he just found, and it's great. It's lasted me, um, all year last year. It went through the, um, winter time. I leave it up. I don't even try to take it down or anything like that because I use it in the summertime. So in, other places having a um you don't generally use your greenhouse and i can't grow plants in here but i can go in here and it stop shorty i see you baby i can go in here and i can do my work so if i was mixing fertilizer or if i needed to tidy up some things or if i was propagating or anything like that that needs to be out here in the sun. I have places to put the plants, you know, which is what this situation is because it's too hot in there um, to have these even in February. But then sometimes it's too cold. So it is what it is. It's cold frame. But anyway, I use it for shade and just to kind of like chill out for a second. So this year, however, I am going to keep the greenhouse up and standing and functional and I've got to tidy it up. But I'm gonna get one of those umbrellas that like have the shaft and then kind of go over right over here in this situation because it's gonna be like my little nook. I'm really excited about that and I'm gonna get my husband to check that out to why it fell. But anyway, that's my garden and I figured that you guys could kind of see where I'm at. I'm gonna try to put these up regularly. We're gonna see how that goes. Please don't hold me to it. I'm really trying to um, figure out electronic side of doing the videos, filming it, and coming up with content, and that type of thing is not exactly a struggle for me as far as the, or not nearly as much as the computer part and the phone part and all that. So that's why I've kind of switched from um, my earlier videos are going to be a lot better put together than these vlogs that I'm switching to. Um, but I would rather you guys have questionable footage and still have the information than not have the information at all and I'd like to have this channel a safe place to come where you guys can ask your questions and build up a community in the comment sections and do different things like that and it doesn't have to be perfect and I have to get my type a brain around that it doesn't have to be perfect and when God told me to start this YouTube channel it's in my heart it's more of a ministry opportunity to share how to steward the land and and just kind of connect with people and share God's word and share how God loves the land and love our hearts and the type of tech involved really doesn't matter so <clears throat> anyway if you liked what you saw today please hit that like button make sure you subscribe and then hit the notification button because I didn't know this but if you subscribe that's cool but if you hit the notification button then it pops up and lets us know lets you know that there's a new video video up and since I'm trying to get some chickens y'all go ahead and hit that notification button too so that you can get those views in there and I can get my uh, thousand views and get me some chicken so try to do that but thanks for hanging out with me today i hope you guys have a very very blessed day and i hope you learned something and if you have any questions please comment below and take care